What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be writing an offer together. So whether you're a real estate agent or you're just an investor or a buyer looking to get some tips and tricks on when you write an offer and maybe understand the offer a little bit more, we are going to write an offer together. I have a buyer that's looking to make an offer tonight and I'm going to walk you through everything that I do when writing an offer and as well as some of the most important parts of it. Let's get right into it. First thing that I'm going to be doing, which obviously not everybody can unless they have a real estate license, is open up the MLS so I can go ahead and get the uh, any disclosures that the seller and listing agent will have for me that will need to be signed by the buyer when they submit an offer to be officially under contract. So we're going to go ahead and get whatever we need um, from the MLS. If you don't have access to the MLS, you're going to have to just go ahead and give the listing agent a call and ask them to send over all the disclosures for your buyers to sign. As well as it's really helpful when you open it up and it's on the MLS, uh, you have access to all the tax information um, as well as the name of the owners and things like that. If you don't have access, sometimes it's all not right there in front of you, but you can still get it fairly quickly. And so now we finally have both of the disclosures downloaded, ready to go. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my uh, e-signing platform or website, which I use Dotlope. There's tons out there uh, in which you can sign virtually. Um, if need be, you can obviously print everything out, sign it by hand, and then send it over through PDF scanner or whatever you wanna send it by. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a loop for the new property, in which oftentimes if you're an agent, uh, your brokerage will often offer some type of e-signature platform sometimes, and hopefully they'll walk you through that. And if you obviously, if you don't have one of those, it's not a big deal, you just print it out and sign it, or you can sign up and sometimes you can use it for. When we're getting ready to send an offer, we're going to have to send a few things. First of all, we're gonna have to send obviously the offer itself, which in Florida, it's gonna be the Florida as is residential con contract. So next is going to be any disclosures that were provided by the seller um, or the listing agent. And then finally after that is any addendum um, that you would like to sign and send by the buyer, which in this case is none that we will, we will be sending over. So all that we'd be sending is the as is contract, which is the offer. Then we're gonna be signing the disclosures um, as well as oftentimes, if not every time, you should be sending your pre-approval, which should be given to you by the lender. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the as is contract and filling it out. Um, and I'll walk you through exactly what I'm doing and why. A lot of it ends up just being a plug and chug, you know, just putting names in, in which in relation to learning on dot loop, you just gotta categorize the individual in which you're trying to put on, which in my case, it's going to be the buyers. They're putting an offer on a property. And then once you have them in there, um, it will actually fill out their names throughout the entire um, document for them to sign automatically. It really helps and it's very, very fast compared to obviously having to walk them through it, sign it by hand, things like that. Technology, amazing. So as you can see here in the dot loop section, it's gonna need the legal description. I can easily go ahead and find that through the tax section um, of the property, which anybody can pull up with their local property appraiser uh, based upon their county. But right here, I have it right in the MLS for me. This as well as it can fill us out specifically the purchase price, how much we want to put and earnest money, things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and not fill those out. So uh, you guys can specifically watch me do all that. All right. So now we have the property. Um, information ready to go we just need to fill out the terms of our contract right so now this is we're getting into what we're supposed to actually be talking about so first thing we're gonna need is the seller's name right I have access I can look easily on the MLS for it if you don't have access oftentimes if you google the property it, the property owners might pull up or you can obviously look at the taxes then you're gonna need the property tax ID again that can obviously be found with the local property appraiser um, which you can find their tax ID Again, agents, you have simple access to it right on the, on the uh, broker synopsis or the MLS sheet. 
So the first most important things we're gonna be looking at, right? You wanna make sure everything's filled out, all the names are correct, both the buyer and seller, um, that obviously the property description is correct, the address, the county, tax ID, and then as well as the legal description. Next is going to be the personal property. Is there anything in the property that you do or do not want specifically, right? So. Um, this is more important, let's say if you had someone living in the property and all their stuff was there, you wanna make sure you don't want something in the property, right? Um, or oftentimes in the MLS, or you can talk to the agent or the listing agent, you can ask them what conveys towards the property when they sell it, right? Like the fridge, um, you know, or sorry, not a fridge, but a uh, extra freezer out in the garage, things like that. You wanna ask, is that staying or going? Do you have to write that in or not? So in this case, we do not want anything that is currently in the property uh, other than the basics like the fridge stove and you leave the kitchen of course um, but anything non attached to the property we're not going to so and honestly looking at the as is contract everything is very very self-explanatory so if you actually read specifically what it's saying and what you're writing it will actually tell you exactly what you should be saying uh, if you do or do not want something I'm putting right here uh, in things that and things that I am including in the property right here. It's something that's very simple, which the agents already know it's involved, but it's a carport and the detached garage. Um, the detached garage isn't necessarily a uh, super official one. It's deep in the back of the, the, uh, the acreage, but we definitely want that to be left. Uh, they're obviously not taking a detached garage, but you know, you wanna make sure you have all your uh, T's and I's dotted or you know the saying. So in this right here, you never wanna leave anything blank as you're going through it, right? Because you, if you ever get into a legal battle, you want everything specifically stated clearly. So next is going to be, and this might be sometimes where people start to have issues uh, in understanding, is the actual purchase price and then how you write the financing numbers and things like that, right? So the first thing, we are going to be offering $285,000 in this case we're gonna be putting $5,000 within escrow. That's going to be what needs to be paid to the title company within three days of going under contract. That's kind of like a show of faith. Next, you're gonna to need to fill out the escrow agent's name and information, address, phone number, email. All that can be found easily on the MLS or you can contact the listing agent and they can do that information. Any additional deposits to be delivered to the escrow agent within blank if left then blank then 10 days after the effective date the answer is going to be zero because there will be no additional deposits to the title company until the actual closing day other than the escrow deposit which in this case within three days they need to send five thousand dollars to the title company often through wire or you can drop off the check so next is going to be how much you're actually going to be financing as in the actual percentage of the loan that's going to be financed so uh, in this example, my buyers, um, they're putting 10% down. So what that's gonna do for the financing section is we're gonna have to put 90%, right? And then other, other section, what other? There is nothing else, zero. You're gonna put zero dollars, right? And then next is going to be the balance to close, not including any closing costs, things like that. So what you're gonna put right here, and this is where people get confused, is you're going to put the percentage that you plan on putting down minus whatever you put within escrow. So in this case, and I'll make sure I get my calculator so I do it correctly, we do 285,000 times 0.1, which is 10%, gives us 28,500. That's 10% down, right? Simple math. But we have to include that we put $5,000 within escrow. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract the 5,000 that we put in escrow, and that will give us 23,000. 500 right very simple and that is how much it would end up costing uh, down payment wise not including any closing costs so sometimes people get tripped up on this section but it's it's usually very very simple um, next is going to be time for acceptance of the offer right you just put where you're comfortable with so today I'm writing an offer very very late so the offer will end uh, tomorrow as in not tonight, but the end of tomorrow, so the day after that. Next is going to be the closing date. Closing date is super crucial, obviously, for whenever the buyers and sellers are comfortable with it. You definitely wanna work your magic there, 
but in relation to my buyers and what's going on, they just want the property. Uh, they're ready to get it as soon as possible and the property is actually vacant. So the sooner the better for the sellers. It's a better incentive to have 30 days versus 45 days. And something to think about in relation to what day of the week that you're closing on, oftentimes, as you can see here, I was gonna select the 20, right? Today is the 27th. Uh, that we're writing this offer. August 27th is a Friday. That's a month away from now. So I'm not going to do that Friday. I'm going to do the following Monday. You're always going to want to set your closing date for like a Monday or Tuesday in the week just in case there's an extension so you can still close that week. If you close or if you planned on or scheduled your closing for a Friday and something comes up and you have to extend it a whole day, that's going to bring you all the way to Monday. You definitely don't want to do that. A lot of this is just standard stuff that you're looking at, extension of closing date. Uh, there's nothing even to sign there. It just gives you the information, what you need to see. Next important thing we're gonna look at is the assignability of this, right? And what that's gonna be used by, that's gonna be used by wholesalers or people that are gonna get the property under contract and then actually sell the contract to someone else. We're not doing this, we're just regular buyers like most people. So we're gonna select may not assign this contract. Next section is gonna be the financing section. Um, what we're gonna do in there is my buyer's not paying cash and we're gonna click section B right here. And then next is gonna be, you're gonna select the options, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. My buyer is a conventional buyer. Um, we're gonna make sure, and you always wanna make sure that you have your rates and make sure it's fixed, obviously, always. You don't want an adjustable rate mortgage. What is this, 2000? And then in relation to these right here, um, we're gonna leave them left blank because it's gonna be based upon what pre-approval letter was sent over. So you gotta make sure that interest rate uh, is not any higher than what the uh, bank agreed to, as well as this right here, if left blank than 30 years financing. Again, we're gonna make, leave that up to the pre-approval letter um, that the loan officer gave to the clients or myself um, to send over. And we just gotta make sure that those parameters are kept, right? So let's say the rates went up somehow, then by this stating, they actually don't have to buy the house anymore, potentially. Next is gonna be the section of the closing fees and charges. Uh, we're gonna leave everything standard in this case. There's no others in this case. And every time you leave something blank, if you do leave something blank, that means you're selecting what it has selected to it, which right here, title evidence and insurance, at least a blank. And then it says right here, if left blank, then 15 or if paragraph 8A is checked, then five days prior to closing date, right? You need title evidence deadline, right? It practically says exactly what you're gonna be needing. So if you leave something blank, oftentimes you're gonna be selecting the average day. But make sure you know what you're doing and you're reading uh, the actual contract itself, right? Next is going to be the seller shall designate the closing agent to pay for the owner's policy. If you're a buyer, you're going to want to always select that, right? You want to make sure that the sellers are paying what they're supposed to pay in relation to the closing cost, any charges and policies there. Uh, if I click section B, right, I'm the buyer's agent in this case, working with a buyer. Uh, we do not want the buyer shall designate a closing agent and pay for the owner's policy. You're going to give them increased charges and responsibility, you don't wanna do that. Next, Miami-Dade, Broward County. Again, that's something that's really not too important. So next is going to be the survey section. It's gonna just give you a few facts. And then we're gonna talk about the home warranty, right? That's gonna be something you're going to want to include if you're looking to get that included. I am not in this case, so we're not gonna fill it out, but that's definitely an important section to think about. So if you do want something, you'd write the amount of money it should not exceed by and then who will end up paying for it. So if you're the buyer, you're gonna wanna obviously put seller and then if you actually did have someone in mind, you could write who they were actually uh, planned to. And then lat, and then this section right here, special assessments, you're always gonna wanna select section B is that the seller shall pay the assessments in full to or at the time of closing, right? Because we wanna make sure that all the assessments are paid. Um, in relation to the property, make sure nothing's sent over to the new buyers, and you wanna make sure that's always checked. Next is the disclosure section. Again, these are just more facts and disclosures. There's nothing to even sign right here. Um, other than this, the flood zone elevation certificate, that's just how many days that you'll end up needing it by, right? If left blank, it will say 20. We already have 20. Again, not too important in relation to the offer. Um, and again, we're looking at more information, more disclosures. 
uh, which there's nothing to even sign in this area. Next, this is going to be the property inspection. This is going to be a very, very important section for both uh, you as a buyer or buyer's agent and explaining to your clients. This is probably the one, one of the most important and most thought of sections in the purchase contract in relation to backing out. Um, so right here, practically what it's saying, and obviously if you just read it, you'll understand exactly what it says, but I'll read it exactly to you. Buyer shall have, and I changed it to 10 to make it more competitive. The less uh, amount of days that you're leaving in this property inspection right to cancel section, the more um, incentivized it is for the seller to accept your offer. So right here, buyer shall have 10 days after effective date within which to have such inspections of the property performed as buyer shall desire during the inspection period. This is the important part right here. If buyer determines in buyer's sole discretion that the property is not acceptable to the buyer, buyer may terminate this contract by delivering written notice of such election to seller prior to expiration of inspection period. Right there, that's practically the most important thing to think about uh, in relation to if you wanted to back out for whatever reason. This inspection period. So once we're under contract, they have 10 days to back out, get their escrow deposit back, no questions asked. It doesn't matter if they changed their mind, uh, it doesn't matter if they didn't like the floors or ceilings or paint colors, or there was something actually wrong with the property, you can back out for whatever reason you see fit because of that right there. So next, these are more just disclosures looking at it. Um, more so, it's important to read them, understand what you're signing, but there is nothing to sign in these sections, or nothing to fill out, sorry. Um, they obviously sign every page. And again, we continue on. If you do have the time, I suggest you do read everything so you understand what you're signing, uh, which is probably the best way to actually learn these contracts just by reading the entire thing. Now we are at the second to last page of the contract. So this right here is going to include any addendum, right? That you have either included when you send over the offer, right? If you have an FHA or VA um, financing or any appraisal contingencies, things like that, you're gonna wanna click the check marks here uh, just so the listing agent and the seller know that you're gonna, they're gonna be signing those in relation to your offer as well. There's none in relation to the offer I'm making other than the uh, seller's disclosure, which that's not even on here. Um, nothing weird. And then as well as if you were looking to make an offer and you wanted to get some closing costs paid for, you would fill it out right here in the additional term section. You can also have a separate addendum for that, um, but oftentimes you can just put it right here in the additional terms to the contract section. And then this right here is going to be where the sellers counter or reject your offer. Uh, oftentimes they just call you and say no. <laughs> they're not gonna click that and send it back oftentimes, even though they're technically supposed to. And then the last part is just more signing, letting you know that they know what they're doing. They signed everything and uh, you would put the listing agent and the broker and the buying agent and the broker down below and make sure everything is filled out, signed. So other than signing any lead-based paint disclosures or any disclosures that the sellers have to offer, um, that is it in relation to writing an offer. I hope that kind of helped if you're a buyer or a, a buyer's agent in this case. Hope to help. I hope you understood and it helped a little bit. If you did, do me a huge favor and give me a like. Subscribe down below for more uh, content just like this, talking about real estate, the life of a real estate agent, and anything real estate related. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.